His subjects L1L8I7CH, known also as Pass. A peculiar specimen who rots away at his computer searching for content on the internet. Due to his ginger hair and pale skin, we can assume he erodes the muster of urine and biscuits. Subject L1L8I7CH often laughs at flatulence, even though he is in his 30th year of life. If you see Baz out in the wilderness, approach with caution and speak in a soft voice. He doesn't like loud people and will run away with haste. It is unknown what the goal of subject L1L8I7CH is, but he rather enjoys when you like his videos and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Baz's class type falls under pathetically harmless, so you need not worry about him. Right, okay. I'd... See how it is. Okay, brilliant. Hello there, internet dwellers. Welcome back to another video. Today, I have a very unique video for you. Ryan, a bit Ryan, my good friend, reached out to me on Discord and said, there's this Instagram page that I think you'll like. And uh, it's full of like these AI entity entries. When I think AI, I think, oh, okay, that's a bit of a, you know, it has a bit of a bad energy to it, you know? But I think in this case, it's not really affecting anybody. I think it's just a person who wants to let their creativity flow and they don't necessarily know how to do it physically for themselves but they know what they want in their head if it's taking away people's jobs and stuff like that then you know that's when it gets a little bit weird but uh, this is just for a little bit of fun and it's a instagram page called latent places as you can see scrolling through here it looks very very unique different entries it's almost like its own scp universe and you gotta like think about it there is creativity behind this but obviously the doing part in actual physically creating this is done by AI. And I'm not sure what kind of AI is doing this. Once again, if you can afford to, you know, hire people to do stuff for you, by all means do so. Usually people who use AI, like they, they don't have the budget to spend on like say voice actors, graphic designers, but please go support your local artist, your local voice uh, artist. This video here is just for fun and showcasing some pretty interesting things. So I went down the list here and decided, you know what? I'm just gonna click on the ones that look good and maybe we'll do some more. There are some here that would probably freak a lot of people out. Like if you're arachnophobic, cause that kind of looks like a gigantic spider, uh, even though it looks like one of those things at the bottom of the ocean. But as you can see here, look, there's different kinds of things. Some look a bit stupid. <laughs> Uh, some look a bit disturbing. So I've selected one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're just gonna go through them. You guys should go follow this account if you like what you see. So the first one we're coming across is called the Flesh Collectors. They look like Slender Man, let's be honest. Here we go. Let's see, let's see what these guys are all about. Sightings of these wild dressed faceless entities have recently spiked near Youngstown, Ohio. Flesh collectors are believed to be agents sent to our realm from an unknown latent dimension. Their intentions appear to revolve around the brokerage of various Faustian bargains. Is that how you say that? Faustian? And the enforcement of their terms. Avoid condemned and abandoned locations as this is where flesh collectors prefer to conduct their grim business dealings. Do not interact directly with a flesh collector as merely being in the presence of these beings may result in acquired debt. Well, I don't know what that means. That's crazy. The ministry has deployed undercover investigators in order to further understand flesh collector behavior and to document the fine print of their contracts. Debtors who are found to be in breach of contract are subject to the garnishing of one's corporeal form of way by way of of an epidermal based payment plan what the hell does that mean okay i'm not sure if this is what's written in the actual video but let's see flesh collectors sightings of these well dressed faceless entities have recently spiked in okay, your tongue okay so it's but i basically just read what the thing is so we're, we're, in the future we'll just let them read but let's have a look at these flesh collectors are believed to be agents sent to our realm from an unknown latent dimension their intentions appear to revolve around the they're men in black basically they've got heads the like nutsacks of their terms, avoid contempt it's like there's quite there's there's kind of a face there. It looks like they're wearing like a skinny a skin morph suit. And locations as this is where flesh collectors prefer to conduct their grim business. What are they, their business? Like what is business dealings? Do not interact directly with a flesh collector as merely being in the presence of these beings may result in acquired debt. 
the ministry acquired has debt. Under so the ministry, I'm guessing, in this this universe is kind of like an SCP investigators universe. In to further understand flesh collector behavior and to document the fine print of their contracts. Right. Debtors who are found to be in breach of contract are subject to the garnishing of one's corporeal form by way of an epidermal based payment plan. This Epidemo. has been a public service announcement from the Ministry of Latent Places. Right. In or relating to the epidermis equals the thin outer layer of the skin. So you're paying back with your skin? That's disgusting. Oh my god. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. Aqua race. We're not going to read the description because that basically is already what they're going to say. So here we go. Aqua race. These haunty entities have been spotted in your village of four seasons in Candle County, Missouri, dwelling within the murky waters of Lake of the Ozarks. The Ozarks? Oh my god, okay. Not much is known about the ghostly creatures, but they appear to travel in small pods of two or three and tend to congregate near the lake that in low visibility areas. It okay, well, why though? Why are they doing that? It's thought they do this specifically oh, okay. to avoid human detection. The forlorn howling of aqua wraiths can carry for miles in and out of the water. Oh. Local residents and visitors report a particular abundance of aqua wraith cries on certain moonless nights. Police reports confirm an up okay. to missing person reports in the days following these dates. Ministry researchers suspect aqua wraiths to be either undead or phantasmal type beings who use their hypnotic wailing to draw humans lakeside. What is okay, so they're like the, they're like you, you know that episode of uh, Love, Death, and Robots. Well, there's that woman and she's singing in the middle of the lake and everyone's like attracted to her and like running towards her and drowning and like dying and stuff. Maybe it's like, like a siren, kind of like that. When done with the victims and their bodies is currently being investigated. This has been a public... What is done with the victims and their bodies is currently being... They're probably turned into aqua wraiths, right? The thing is, like, things that touch on stuff like this, because uh, I think a lot of people, let's be honest, are afraid of water. Not because you drown in it, but you're also scared of what's beneath you. Some people are just scared of, like, the knowing nothing is beneath you. Like, just this vast emptiness. Well, it's not empty, let's be honest. And that's what other people are scared of, like me. You don't know what's beneath you, and you're in their territory. You're basically, wow, what, like a fish is out of water, you're a human in water. Unless you're Michael Phelps or a freaking elite swimmer, you don't have um, a lot of control. But that was interesting. So, Aqua Wraiths. The next one is Dead Maul, and this seems more like a liminal space than anything. Here we go. Dead Mall, a spike in latent activity has been measured at the abandoned Diamond Run Mall in Rutland. You know, I'm getting, a, I'm getting, I'm sensing a theme here that um, it's just people gathering in like empty spaces, basically, and they're different kinds of entities. You know, at least they're sociable. Vermont, ministry field agents dispatched to the location have confirmed the presence of several spectral apparitions wandering throughout the rundown shops of the Forgotten Plaza. Okay. The beings reportedly resemble teenagers with stylistic influence from death. That looks disturbing. If I saw that in the distance, I'd run. Decades past, many subcultures seem to be represented among the group of phantom youth, including Mall Goth and the Hipster. Mall Goth? Is that a thing? Indie hipster. Kid, illuminated lighting, distorted music, and indiscernible chatter are prominent in areas of the mall with notably high latent readings. Agents report feeling an unnameable nostalgic despair and an overwhelming urge to be drawn into the group's while in their proximity. That what just nostalgia, basically. Yeah, that's um nostalgic despair. That sounds horrific. You want to go back there, but you can't. Uh, that's just called growing up. Unfortunately, this this entity it could literally just be called growing up. Local residents born between 1965 and 1996 are being advised to stay at least 100 yards away from the building at all times. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm not going near there then. I'm a 93 baby. Technically, I'm more uh, 94. I'm like the last week of 93, but still, I'm 1993. <laughs> 
This has been a public service announcement from the Ministry of Latent Places. Right, so that one is a mall full of typical kind of teenagers hanging around malls. The thing is, like, you know, I guess you don't really get that anymore. People still will go around. There are shopping centers and stuff like that, but it's not as big as it used to be maybe in the 90s, the 80s. Even the, like, early 2000s was still good, but then come, like, the 10s and the, the 20s, it just completely, like, everything went online and, like, uh, local businesses, family businesses, and stuff had to like close down because all of these monopolizing by well, these big corporations monopolizing everything and they they're not able to kind of match the prices because everything they do is you know homemade and stuff like that whereas these corporations they they outsource their work to third world countries basically and they can have people doing labor for super cheap so you can't compete with that I don't mean to be political, that's just the truth. And when, you know, it, there was nothing quite like... Even nowadays, you, you don't really see, feel it anymore. Like, shopping centres aren't as busy as they used to be. Or, you know, kids don't really go there anymore. Because everything's online. We're all moving online to, like, gaming and stuff like that. But I would say to the youth nowadays, definitely get out there with your friends. Uh, you know, go to the local shopping centre whilst you still can. Because I don't know how long they're going to be around for. Oldest view with Kane Pixels. That was basically a way of saying, you know, forgotten memories. These, this thing is forgotten about. Deep down, it's a guardian of these forgotten malls. Valley Mall, specifically. Not to get too deep. It's, it's a shame. It's a shame is what it is. Let's move on, guys. Right, this one was interesting. These are called Hither Witches. Here we go. Hither Witches. This coven of eight metal witches newly reside in the Hither Woods, New Montauk, New York. New Practice. York, my god, no one's safe. The astrological. No, these are all in America. We're good. The rest of the world, we're absolutely fine. The focused form of eclectic wick of the Hither Witches find spiritual fulfillment in the stars and their elemental properties. They mm -hmm. believe that the Mother Goddess forged all precious metals in a heavenly furnace and that these materials as found on Earth are holy relics. For this okay. reason, Hither Witches place special focus on the creation and exhibition of fine jewelry, self forged okay. chains and ornaments that during their wardrobe and hang from their shrines. These pieces represent a deep connection to the stars, Earth, and entirety of the universe. Their veils are thought to encourage a collective connection to their surroundings and the souls of mm -hmm. one another. Many okay. researchers suspect that the Coven has access to a hidden network of caves that lead to private door veins. The Hither Witches have no desire to leave their humble wooded home despite their high net worth. This their high net worth? What, because of the jewels and stuff? Been a public service so there's just witches in the woods? Just leave them alone, man. They're living their best life. Are they hurting anyone? Doesn't I didn't see anything about them like hurting anyone. The spiritual fulfillment in the stars and their elemental properties. They believe that the mother goddess forged all precious metals in a heavenly furnace and that these materials are found on earth. So they're just guarding what they think their mother, their holy mother, made for them. That's all they're doing. What happens if you get close to them hasn't really been said, but they're witches, so I'm assuming they have some kind of powers that they can use. This one is, I mean, look at that. Roots people. People, a vast network of sentient roots has been discovered under the garden maze at Lou Ray Caverns in Virginia. The business has undergone recent media scrutiny due to the unexplained disappearance of multiple patrons while in its ornamental Oh, garden. it's like a freaking goblet of fire in the maze. Ministry agents have confirmed that the nearby caverns extend underneath uh. the maze, creating its own series of labyrinths. See, this is another reason I wouldn't go caving, guys. There could be some kind of root monster in there that you're unaware of. It's about 200 feet directly beneath the tourist attraction. Growing from the floors, walls, and ceilings of this hidden cave system are exposed uh. roots that resemble an expansive group of writhing humanoids. Although root people appear to be comprised of individual bodies, they are thought to be a single interconnected predatorial organism. Oh, okay, Humans, so it's they're all connected. The remains indicate that root people fuel their growth by extracting moisture and mineral content from biological tissue. In oh my god, that's terrifying. It looks like Enad from freaking Five Nights at Freddy's. True documents obtained by ministry agents suggest an attempt to conceal the garden maze disappearances from the public. This has been a public service. Okay, a vast network of sentient roots has been discovered under the garden maze at Luray Caverns in Virginia. So they live under the maze in some caverns. And they feed of biological tissue. 
so you can see like there definitely is creativity here in the in the descriptions and like the the stories behind these entities there definitely is creativity there and it's awesome to see Look, this is what AI should be used for. I agree. It's not hurting anybody. I think it's pretty freaking cool. Groot Tweaker Cousins. Oh, I shouldn't. Know. The Instagram comments are really deadly, actually. Craziest thing is that trees will literally consume dead bodies. Heard of this family who buried their grandpa under a tree without a box and then came back to move his body somewhere else and the roots had consumed his body and you could see the outline of the dude in the roots. That's freaking terrifying. Oh my God. The thing about Instagram is that it plays automatically and you can't like go backwards. So you gotta like pause it instantly. So this is the single cell. Single cell. This giant throat is always the loneliest living organism on planet Earth. Nope, that's me. That's me right here. Flow PA was the at the oceanic pole of inaccessibility, aka Point Nemo, the solitary creature. Point Nemo. Nemo means. What does Nemo mean again? Nemo is a given nickname and surname. It is a Latin for nobody. Your inhabits what is arguably the most remote location in the world. One yeah, thousand. This is freaking. You know, um, in Subnautica, when you enter the ecological dead zone. Look at that. You can almost see eyes there. That's terrifying because that is guarded by ghost leviathans. The thing about um, Subnautica and games like that is that it's technically it wasn't made as a horror game. It's what well, kind of is. Th there needs to be more games like that. I, lo I mean, I love and hate it, but I, I think that genuinely is a primal fear of mine. And um, yeah, the one thing that truly scares me. From dry land in any direction, Point Nemo has only ever served as a safe disposal ground for decommissioned space vessels and is void of any other life. Damn. The single cell okay. is fueled by salt ions, has no predators, and is too weak to escape the vortex of currents that imprisons it. The single Damn. cell has never undergone mitosis or engaged in sexual reproduction, instead opting to grow indefinitely. He's got, he's gone monk mode. He's like 90 days, no fap. <laughs> Left unchecked, the cell would likely expand and engulf the Earth in its depressing cytoplasm. The oh, that's horrible. Has formulated plans to detonate a small nuclear warhead within its cell walls before this comes to pass. Oh, okay, so this has been a that's crazy. So it could grow and completely take over the Earth, but they've got a freaking so someone had to swim in there with a nuke. A single cell has never undergone my test or engaged in sexual reproduction. Hits too close to home. <laughs> This isn't real, actually. <laughs> Imagine they explode it and it turns into smaller cells that grow and reproduce. Like freaking Shin Godzilla with the little mini Godzillas or whatever that uh, analog horror that we watched was all about. Here we go. Here's a nice cute one for you guys. These are called cat rats. Here we go. Cat rats. These glassy feline rodent hybrids belong to a multi-generation colony residing in the Walnut Street Post Office in Corning, New York. Mm. Approximately 80 of these adaptable creatures. Oh god, that bastards! Oh no, what happened? When the stacks of mail and parcels that pass through the building each day, cat rats are social animals and spend their days playing, eating, and lounging yeah. alongside post office employees during or post office. That's so. Oh, okay, your passwords encountered an unexpected delay. These guys work at the post office. Who operating hours. As cat rats show no interest in hunting mice, their diet primarily consists of food provided to them by workers, local shelters, and corny residents. Yeah! Uh, at night, the colony has been observed leaving the post office to disappear into the surrounding area. Well, living in the sewer system. Imagine the city, uh, like, uh, imagine... <sighs> If rats were as... I mean, rats are cute, right? But the, the the thing that's wrong with rats is that they carry a lot of things with them. Like, they literally live in shit, sewer systems filled with shit and pus and sh piss. And it's like, they. but once you clean them up and domesticate, they're, they're cute as hell, man. They're clever as hell. As evidenced by found remains, it appears as though cat rats use the cover of night to stalk and hunt the local coyote population purely for sport. Yeah. This particular Wait, what? USPS location has one of the highest employee retention rates in the country. Hygiene is an issue that is reportedly being addressed. This has been a public... Yeah, I mean... There's a place, there's a prison, I think, in the US, or I don't know if it's in the US, but they're given, like, a cat for good behavior. I don't know how it works, but apparently it's calmed down a lot of the prisoners and, like, having, like, their own little pet. And if, they're, if they misbehave, the cat's taken away from them. How possible is domestication? You know what? Yemeni is asking the important questions. They don't want you to know this, but the cat rats at the post office are free. You can just take them home with you. Hell yeah. Let's go. I'm going down to my local post office and demanding a cat rat. 
Right, so that's all the ones I selected out. So we can have a look at look, some more. This one kind of stands out to me. What's this? Dream Mill. Dream Mill. Ministry investigators have uncovered a network of makeshift medical facilities scattered throughout Randall, New Jersey. Evidence suggests that the facilities are being used to illegally harvest mass amounts of data from sedated humans. That's insane. Oh my goodness. Petabytes of raw brainwave REM and other biometric data were recovered on site. Further investigation indicates that these real Oh my god, what what kind of data can you sell from that you're literally selling people's thoughts. That's insane. These are run by an underground group of criminals known as real dealers. Hang on, hang on. This reminds me of uh, cyberpunk what's the thing called when like you have memories uh so some people die in those memories and you can live them through and people do it because it gives them a high because they feel like they died so that episode of black mirror when the doctor wears a little hat and he can feel the symptoms that the the victim or the, the victim the patient is feeling the patient dies whilst he's wearing the thing and then he has this kind of like thrill and then he gets some kind of like sexual pleasure and he basically has like, I keep calling them victims, Jesus Christ. I mean, they are technically victims to him. He purposefully doesn't help them so that he can feel them die. It's madness. We're apprehended in the raid. Dream dealers coordinate. Dream dealers, man. A complicated operation involving kidnapping human trafficking, anesthesiology, computer science, and data broker. It's, it's terrifying to think about that. Maybe like this is a thing that can be done in the future. Like maybe we can act like we can turn our brainwaves or whatever into actual data that can be accessed by people or, you know, uh, decrypted to be understood. And that's a terrifying thought because that probably would increase stuff like trafficking. Rich. Digital forensics indicate that the data farm from the victims is sent to buyers with the intention of draining advanced neural networks. The identity and motivation of these buyers is currently unknown. This has been a public yeah. service. Yeah, uh, there's some freaky ass people out there, man. This is probably the most plausible of these so far. Like, I could actually see something like this happening in real life. Exactly, Tommy. Protonians. Onions, widespread black ops are being reported in Boise, Idaho and surrounding wow. suburbs. The power outages are being attributed to a group of sentient entities known as Protonians. Protonians could be spotted siphoning energy from power lines, wow, okay. stations, and other electrical infrastructure. Composed of 90% superheated plasma, these cationic beings superheated plasma tend to emerge when strong fluctuations in both interlatent and electromagnetic fields drift into phase with one another. Protonian sightings are extremely dangerous, albeit short lived. Bretonians are known to live out the entirety of their lives in distinct microbursts lasting no longer than two to three seconds. <laughs> wow, okay, that's one hell of an existence right there. But is it like, for them, is it subjective? Like to us, it's like two to three seconds. Like let's say in the grand scheme of the universe, how long the, the universe has been around and the world and stuff, our lives, that's basically what this is. It's two to, not even two to three seconds, it'll be milliseconds appear to humans as a momentary flash of light is in fact the so like is the saying that lightning strikes almost are like these things come into life the entire life cycle of an intelligent being from birth to death and all the moments in between the ministry is funding the development of an ultra high speed communication protocol in an effort to make contact with the fleet why would you want to make contact with them life forms this has been a public service in wow okay they're alive longer than i last in bed i mean that's okay and his name is Fast Sam. <laughs> I mean, he's probably telling the truth. There we go. Right, we'll, we'll do one more. What's, what's one more that we should do? So well, let's do this one here. I didn't want to do it, but we're going to do it. They're called Umbral Bugs. Bugs. The following is an urgent announcement for all citizens in the path of April 8th's total solar eclipse. Be on the lookout for various insect-like entities acting in an aggressive manner ah. along the eclipse's path. Oh Fuck God! The magic and nature swarms of this is literally just an average day in Australia. Total bugs were documented wreaking havoc across the country during 2023's annular eclipse. Ministry researchers eventually lost track of the beings near Kerrville, Texas, where it's thought the bugs burrowed into the earth to hibernate. Jeez. Total bugs are expected. To what a shit place to burrow as well. Everyone's got fucking guns in Texas. That would be 
flamethrower in those things straight out. Will hide at 1.32 p.m. Central Daylight Time on the afternoon of April 8th as totality approaches the city. From there the bugs will sprint across the eastern slot of the continent chasing the moon's shadow while feeding on any living organism they encounter along oh, the way. Oh, whoa. Chasing the moon's shadow whilst feeding on anybody in the and way. The bugs are expected to settle in Miramachi, New Brunswick. Here they will hibernate once again awaiting the partial solar eclipse on March 29, 2025. This has oh been public service. Well, you know, rest in peace to anybody in the way there. But like I said, they're in America. They're, they're, they've got a, a shitload of guns there. I feel like it's a terrible place to... You know, like, what, what's it called? Starship Troopers. They're basically Starship Troopers, but just in America. Good luck to them bugs, that's all I'm going to say. You know what? I'm going to leave this here, guys. Nice little short video for you guys. I really enjoy these things, you know? Like, anything that kind of... Uh, just... It reminds me of, like, Doctor, Doctor Nowhere actually does their own stuff. Like, um, no, no offense to this latent place, guys. But Doctor Nowhere actually draws out and makes their own kind of compendium of weird creatures so i'm not comparing the two because like a lot of work is put into dr nowhere but it reminds me of that dr nowhere kind of vibe in terms of like creativity of thinking up the actual entities and uh what they do why they're there i think it's really freaking cool so guys if you enjoyed go follow latent places on instagram and big shout out to a bit ryan for recommending me as you can see he follows the page here i really enjoy stuff like this if you guys have something similar that you want me to because i feel this this is still kind of analog horror but it's a different form it's short form analog horror it's just short enough like to kind of get your curiosity spiked not long enough to kind of explain everything and be like oh well, it's not so special anymore i like the curiosity the unexplainableness of it because that that really sticks in your head and then you start trying to think of like the answers behind it like why is it that way and why am i not central to the camera you know stuff like that but there we go guys that was today's video i hope you did enjoy if you did, be sure to leave a like rate and subscribe. Be sure to join my Discord, guys, and submit me some scary stuff in the Scare Bath Submission channel. I don't know what I just said, but did I just say submission? You know what I mean, submission channel. And if I react to whatever you submit in there, I will give you a shout out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for the support as always. It means the world to me. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.